<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, bunny. Yes. Cough, 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 cough. Beginning cough, cough. Let's talk. What'd you say, Bella? Bunny Ripa. Bunny Ripa. That's a good one. That's a good one, Bella. Thank you. <laughs> well then, Bunny Ripa, let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal employee in fairly good standing for most of the time. For well over 16 years at my local bookstore, and as such... I really do have my brown fingers on the pulse of the book world, and I am here to rub my pulsating brown fingers all over your sweaty face with this week's installment of Notes from the Bookstore. I love this segment so much. I love this segment so much. I want to marry it. I want to, I want to, I want to take it home and just kiss it all over. I love it so much. And things have been very very stressful at your local bookstore recently, but not because of any of the reasons, not because of any of the reasons that we have already previously mentioned on the show, like uh, visits from suits or secret shops or employees being kidnapped and sent to literary internment camps for the unforgivable crime of flair. (laughs) No, this week is more basic. It's more basic, it's more uh, normal, it's more down-to-earth. Two things, it's two things, two very basic things that are making life difficult for the employees at your local bookstore. Number one, finals. Finals. Freaking finals. We have some real spring chickens working at your local bookstore, and it's crazy. It's crazy, at least to me, because, oh my god, I can't believe finals are this week, is a sentence I have not said this century. (laughs) <laughs> I have not said that this century this century I've never said oh my god I can't believe finals are this week so I'm not a young man as, yes. as we've talked about before I am not a young man but I do have a lot of young employees young fellow employees who are basically running on fumes and red bulls right now <laughs> it's basically their, their water right now so here's an idea. Here's a money-making idea for you, Bunny, for anybody who's listening. If you really want to make some quick, easy cash mm-hmm. right now, this is what you do. You head on over to your nearest coffee shop or bookstore cafe and start selling Scantrons. Okay. That is how you're going to make millions right now. You go to your local uh, bookstore's cafe. You start selling Scantrons, number two pencils, Adderalls, and cocaine. And these will all sell like hotcakes. (laughs) At your local bookstore, I guarantee. Yes. So a lot of our employees have finals right now. And as a result of all of that studying and cramming that they're doing, they're basically useless. Okay. Basically, we can't use them. We can't use them. They're so stressed out, and, and they're studying, and yada, yada, yada. So they're they're like zombies, but just with perfect porcelain skin. Yeah. You know? It's ridiculous. Perfect skin. Perfect. Perfect skin. I thought when I turned 40 that uh, the zits would stop. Yeah. I was wrong. <laughs> What did you wait? Wait, wait, what did you say? Am I a lot scared of snakes? I used to be a lot scared of snakes, but then um, it it was a really touching moment. A uh, family of snakes moved in next door, and at first I was all like, "Oh, I don't trust them. They're snakes." But eventually, we started getting to know each other, and we really realized that we have more in common that we have. uh, you know, that, that we have more that brings us together than separates us. We had a barbecue, and it was really nice. <laughs> yeah. It is. I'm also pretty sure that that is the plot line of a Berenstain Bears book. 
I would not be out. surprised. Where and they are live next door, and, and it feels like a vaguely racist book because Papa Bear's all like, "I don't trust them pandas." <laughs> it's like, oh, this, it seems seems vaguely racist, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just go with it. So, so basically, with finals coming up, there's yeah. there's a sizable amount of people on staff that that we just can't use. And as for the people on our staff that we can use, well, that brings us directly to number two of the two very basic things that are making life difficult for your local uh, booksellers. The crud. The what? The crud. The crud. The crud. The crud has hit us, Bunstantinople. The crud has hit us, and it has hit us hard. The crud, the yucks, the sickies, the Donald Trump's dead eyes, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> One person gets sick, Bunny. One person in the store gets sick, and the crud just passes. It starts bouncing around like a like a freaking uh, pinball. It starts yeah. going from person to person, employee to employee, bookseller to bookseller, like Donald Sutherland in Body Snatchers. <laughs> it just goes. and next thing you know, the employee has these dead eyes and going. Arr! That's how it works. Yeah, people are getting picked off so ra- rapidly around me. It's like a battle royal with more snot. <laughs> <laughs> Battle Royal, if it, instead of blood, it was neon green snot. That that's life right now, at that, least that for is me. Pretty serious. Yeah, at your local bookstore, it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. So a lot is riding on me right now. Uh-huh. A lot is riding on me right now at work. Why you might ask? Why? Thank you for asking. I was going to ask you to ask because. Pause for dramatic effect. In parentheses, I'm unsickable. <laughs> I am unfreaking sickable. That is one strong positive that comes from having so many GD kids. I have changed so many diapers. I have held so many feverish babies. Uh-huh. I have held back so many girls' hair while they're vomiting. I have been elbow deep in snot and vomit. And human waste because being a parent is gross as hell. <laughs> Not just gross, but like, but like uh, Samuel L. Jackson house. So hell. Yeah. Yes, they died, and I hope they burned in hell. <laughs> being a parent is gross as hell. Gross all over the gross. But because of all of the grossishness that I have been uh, privy to. My immune system is unstoppable. Yes. My immune system is a golden god. My, I, it's the Incredible Hulk of immune systems. It really is great. It really is great. Yes, Maxwell. Yes, you know, uh, under my skin is gold. Under your skin is gold? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, a you're a golden boy? Well, I love you so much that I will try not to take a cheese grater to you. Well, punch you. Punch you? Yeah. I'm not going to punch you. Maxwell, why am I going to punch you? Oh, wow! No, really. Oh, I'm not going to you, Maxwell. No. It won't hurt. Just punch me in. And punch I am not going to punch you. There's no reason for me to punch you. You don't owe me money. <laughs> Stop hitting yourself, okay? Okay. I, I I believe you. You're a golden boy. They made a movie about that. It had Eddie Murphy. It was funny. <laughs> I want the knife. It was good. It was basically like a like an eighties African American big trouble in little China. Yes. I just came up with that. That was really good. That and really very good. fitting, I think. I think that's a perfect description. Yeah. It's like if Eddie Murphy was, uh, what's his name, Jack? Jack Burton. Where's my peeps? Jack Burton. I kept wanting to say Jack Bauer, so I was <laughs> in the ballpark. I don't know where your peeps are. I do not know where your peeps are, Maxwell. So, basically what I'm saying is, uh, Bunford and Sons, Yes. is that 
I need to write a self-help book. Uh, that may be a very good idea. Yeah. My, my working title right now is The Dirty Diaper Healthcare System. <laughs> that's, that's my work. But I think it's a pretty good and idea. And all child Something care like workers... That. It's a gold idea. All, all child care workers will buy it. You will become rich. Yeah. You. yeah. It's just... It's a, it's, a, it's a great... It's a great... System. <sighs> Maxwell, did you just turn off the podcast again? No, you didn't. Good job, no. Maxwell, for not turning off, off the podcast. Yeah, so, let's talk about books. Let's talk about books. Yay! He's not... Let's talk about books. J.K. Rowling. Yes. The legendary J.K. Rowling is just... She is just now putting the finishing touches on her brand new book. Really excited about it. It should be coming out uh, next summer, I believe, or, or early next year. Yeah. The book is called The Jokes on You. The full title, it's a bit of a long title, but the full title is called Ha! The Jokes on You. This isn't a real novel. It's just a freak. In screenplay, have fun explaining that to 70% of your customers, Steve. <laughs> Bit of a long title, but yeah, it's going to be really fun explaining to people. No, it didn't buy the wrong book. JK is just writing screenplays now. She's like Doyle from the new Gilmore Girls. <laughs> She's wearing concert shirts and uh, expensive ripped jeans and she, you know it's a phase kids it's a yeah. phase <laughs> JK's going through a phase and if uh, history has taught me anything is that we just need to wait we just need to wait it out eventually she'll become so desperate she'll write another Harry Potter novel I fully believe this that's how we got Rocky 7 we got Basic Instinct 2 and we got the upcoming Twin Peaks the geriatric edition yes Bella saw the preview for Twin Peaks, and she's like, that looks kind of spooky, and I would really like to see it, but everyone's so old. <laughs> and we got, into this, we got into this weird time travel conversation, and then I told her about how the show was originally like 30 years ago, and the show actually ended with one character saying to another one, I'll see you in 30 years, and so it's a big deal that 30 years later they're coming back, and, and she said... And I said, maybe I should get Twin Peaks and show it to you because I think you might like it, Bella. For anyone in the house, I think you might like Twin Peaks. And she said, well, I don't want to watch Twin Peaks if there's all these old people. And I'm like, no, no. 30 years ago, they weren't old. And, I, and she said, yeah, but it's the same people and they're all old now. And I'm like, no, <laughs> but they weren't. And they were young. They were 30 years younger. And she said, yeah, but they're old now. So why would I watch that? But they weren't old then. You would like the then. But her but her ageist the... bigotry runs deep. Uh-huh. I couldn't explain it to her. I couldn't explain it to her. There was just no explaining it to her. Oh, you could. She she just refuses to get it, the little bigot. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Refuses. Hey kids. hey, kids, here is a fun fact for you. Rick Steves, we've talked about him before on Notes from the Bookstore. Rick, C Rick Steves, the soft-spoken travel guru, PBS headmaster, and king of white privilege. <laughs> he's, written a number, he's written a number of travel books. He's considered just the master of travel. He actually, uh, interesting fact, he has a, an hour-long radio show. And it plays on the weekends on your local NPR station. A, a couple of uh, last week, I woke up super early. We had no coffee in the house, so I woke up super early so I could get coffee, so I could come back home, make the coffee, get ready for work, and then leave. It seemed like a ridiculous extra step, but I just need my coffee. Mm -hmm. And so I'm listening to Rick Steves, the Rick Steves Radio Hour, which I've never heard before, and. Um, Sadly, however, sadly, I'm here to inform you that despite my own personal best wishes, Rick Steves' show is not of the shock jock variety. Oh. I'm disappointed by that. I really do think that he could be a great shock jock. You've got Howard Stern. Uh-huh. Number one, Howard Stern. Number two, maybe a man cow's morning 
madness. Yeah. If he's even still alive. Number three, uh, Pawnee, Indiana's own crazy Ira and the douche. <laughs> and then four, and then number four, the Rick Steves Travel Hour. Hello, every all of you listeners out there listening on your local NPR stations. I am Rick Steves, your host for the Rick Steves Radio Hour. This week, we will be discovering hidden gems of Barcelona. <laughs> we will be talking about some must-see spots in Eastern Europe. We will also have Walter the Angry Dwarf in the studio, and we will see if we can paste some strippers to pee on his face. <laughs> We're going to be taking your calls and asking, a answering your questions about the best cruises to take. And as always, we're going to have another fun game of Spank the Homeless Man right here <laughs> on the radio. See, that would be some great, that would be some great radio. Yes, it would. Really do, th really do think he has, he, you know, he can make a big. Yes. He can make a big. <laughs> and when you are big, when you are big, do me a favor. Uh -huh. When you get home, you go into the closet, you put on your swan hat, and you look in the mirror and you remember who you used to be, where you came from. <laughs> I may be the only person who has made a Sandy Wexler reference. <laughs> That's that is history. Woo! <laughs> but I'm proud of the fact that I may have been the first one to make that reference. Yes, but it could be damaging to the show. It could be. It could be. I should stop mentioning Adam Sandler. I just keep mentioning Adam <laughs> Sandler in this episode. He's just so amazing. And of course, he the needs big to go into a little band section and and shun, just shun. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And of course, the big news, the big, big news in the book world is, of course, the controversy surrounding the very popular best selling teen book by teen book author Asher J. Fleming. He's the son of Asher Fleming. Okay. The professor who uh, had sex with Paris Geller right before he died. Ah. Interesting fact, he was a very old man who died of old age because he survived the ritual of carousel. Ah. That was a uh that was a reference in a reference. Yes, it was. In reference. Reception. Was, yeah, that was ref referenceception. <laughs> Of course, I am talking, of course, about the highly sought after teen melodrama book entitled 15 Reasons Why Killing Yourself is Like Totally Awesome. Can you <laughs> can you believe that some uptight parents out there somehow actually think that the book 15 Reasons Why Killing Yourself is Like Totally Awesome glorifies teen suicide? I don't even know how anyone. <laughs> think that this sappy pro-suicide book, which clearly goes to great lengths, lengths to explain the 15 legitimate reasons why a teen girl would commit suicide, could in any way glorify suicide. Yeah. I mean, come on. Just come on. <laughs> We're new parents. You got these crazy ideas, you know? Mm-hmm. And of course, and of course now, uh, some schools are banning discussion of it. Uh, some schools, because... Now, this beautifully sappy book is now a Netflix show. Uh huh. That that was seemingly created, as far as I can tell, the show was created solely so that everyone that was creatively involved can say that they're doing a service. Yes. They're like, oh, we didn't create this show for ratings. We created this to pat ourselves on the back. <laughs> We, we created this to do a service for teens everywhere, and we are definitely not crassly cashing in on a popular teen novel that simultaneously shovels glorified trauma down our, your throat while also patting itself on the back for showing it in the first place. Yeah. No. We're doing you a service. 
I yeah, I've I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about that show, and I just don't feel I need to watch it. Yeah, I, I don't. So I don't care if in it's that awesome. same smarmy pat yourself. Yeah, in that same smarmy pat yourself on the back for glorifying teen suicide way. I would like to take this time to say that your local bookstore is currently well stocked with copies <laughs> of the popular book, 15 Reasons Why Killing Yourself is like totally awesome, as well as the paperback edition, the 10th anniversary special edition hardcover, and the paperback nonfiction co uh, Netflix cover, the Netflix uh, cover, and the super special edition with deleted scenes in the original ending. That is all in stock right now. Yes. Your local bookstore. Interesting fact. Interesting fact. Um, the book, 15 Reasons Why Killing Yourself, is like totally awesome. You know what the original title for that was? Uh, what was it? Go Ask Alice 2, The New Generation. <laughs> Alice I, uh... from Ask Alice has a teenage daughter, and she looks at Pot once, and suddenly she kills herself. <laughs> That's how it works. That how that's how it works. Uh -huh. I when I was a teenager, I I was at a party and they were huffing the marijuana's. Uh -huh. Fifteen minutes later, I was a homeless pregnant woman. And that's just how I, it works. I wish I could say that I was surprised. Yeah, that's just how it works. Yeah, that's just how. It works. Yeah, that's how, it's it, sad. That's how it goes. Yeah. That's just like it's go ruining, ask It's ruining mm. lives. Yeah, yeah, ruining lives. Just not if you no. look at the statistics at all. <laughs> yeah. And that is it for this week's notes from the bookstore. I when, I thought the book that you were going to reference was uh, pressure cooker recipes for a guy's name Ted. Oh no, I, that's still. I'm still working on that. Uh, I'm still working on that. It's gonna be a good book. Good. It's gonna be a good book. It's 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 very specific. It's a book. It's not a book for everybody. Uh, it, it, I'm also working on a second cookbook. Yeah. It, it originally originally it was going to be entitled "Everyone Can Cook," but then I decided to go for a more. Uh, I like my books to be more for specific people. I don't like my books to be for everybody. Yeah. I'm a cult class, not a bestseller. <laughs> so that's why my second cookbook, that's why my second cookbook is called Everyone Can Cook, Just Not You. <laughs> and it's recipes for people who aren't you. Yeah. So if you buy my cookbook, you can do any of the recipes and we'll be really serious about this I'm, I'm already hiring guards <laughs> gotta be strict about this sort of thing gotta be strict it's, yes. it's a strict publishing is a strict world yes and it is that is it and that is it for this week's notes from the bookstore. And remember, kids and kidettes, you can save 10% on all of your purchases. You just need to spend 20% more. <laughs> but we also send you really nice coupons. So it's kind of a give and take. Yeah. It's kind of a give and take. 